All right. Yep, that's a sniper rifle, all right. Yep, that is a 50 BMG rifle with a big old fucking drum mag. <laughs> if this is like a rotary magazine, a 16 round 50 MG capacity is not out of the question. <laughs> Why does it have a bayonet? Oh, it's like a bolo knife bayonet, which is really weird. But if we're ignoring the bolo knife bayonet, which we are for right now, we're just going to ignore that. Are, can we even? It's so big. I, I'm I'm ignoring it. It makes for the, the gun so front heavy. I know it's really stupid. You wouldn't actually put that on the end of a sniper rifle because it's going to fuck up your barrel harmonics and it's going to throw off your shot every single time. But at the same time, that barrel is so long that it might actually make for a good pole arm. If you're trying to make a sniper rifle. Don't put that fucking bayonet on the end. It fucks up everything. Anyway. What if it's a pole arm first and a sniper rifle second? Then it's a really bad sniper rifle. But I, or a really good pole arm. I said it before and I'll say it again. Things that are designed to do two things usually don't do either of those things very well. Jack of all trades, master of none. D there's more to that phrase though. Yeah. Is oftentimes better than a master of one is the rest of that phrase. So? So jack of all trades is generally a good thing. That is not a good thing for this gun. Anyway, that's not what I'm that's not what we're talking about. If that is like a clockwork rotary mechanism, like the the Milcor MGL140 is like a clockwork mechanism, uh -huh. the Amstel Striker is also like a clockwork mechanism. Mm -hmm. If it's like that, then a 16 round mag magazine capacity is not out of the question. And after daylight saving this time, it's a 17 round magazine. Oh my god, Mike. <laughs> Look, it's an Owen submachine gun! Come yeah. on, man! Ah, hold on, maybe we can use it later. So, the Owen submachine gun's super cool, because it basically was designed by an Australian guy. Like, an Australian teenager. He left it in the shed before he went to war. And then his dad found it and was like, Hey, I, be I bet the Australian military would be interested in this! And the Australian military was like, Fuck yeah, we like this thing! This is amazing! <laughs> so they, they bought it, they brought Owen, the guy who made it, back from combat, to redesign it and make more of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, the magazine sticking straight up will always be dumb. No, it's actually really good because nope. it means you don't have to have as strong of a spring. Also, it will always be dumb. No, it isn't. The iron sights are offset, so you don't have to look through. I realize you can't see it. You see how the front sight is like angled off the side of the barrel? It's the same thing with the rear, the rear sight. The rear sight's angled off the side of the barrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not dumb, it's actually a really good idea. Uh, uh, having, the, having the magazine on the top is a good idea because it means, it means that you don't have to have as strong of a spring because gravity aids in feeding. Yeah, but then you also have a magazine in your face. No you don't, it's not really that bad honestly. Uh, if you say so. I've fired them before, it's not as bad as you think it's gonna be. It does mean that if you're left handed it's kinda hard to use the gun. Mom, I want an Owen gun. Can we have an Owen gun? No, son, we have an Owen gun at home. Owen gun at home. It's not obstructing my vision! <laughs> the magazine isn't vertical, it's not good! I want top feed magazine, goddammit! Give me my Bren guns! Give me my Owen guns! The Give me my World War I Italian submachine gun that technically is an assault rifle, but actually isn't an assault rifle because it's a 9mm. Gravity feed isn't a thing, ooh! Gravity assisted. Gravity assisted. It's not gravity feed. Shut gravity up. feed is a different thing. Shut gravity up. feed is like a colette pistol, like a par like a parlor gun. I did make an error the last time I talked about this gun. I said it was a double feed magazine. It's a double stack single feed magazine. That's important. I'm gonna use this World War II submachine gun. Whoa! Watch out for Kazor's card. Everyone's shooting at Kazdors with overpowered guns. I'm out here with a Sten gun, just like, Yeah! Look at me, I'm a commando! <laughs> That's why you're the meat shield. I mean point man. Okay, it's actually pretty effective. <laughs> also, one of the things that I noticed that's wrong about this Sten gun, the bolt should be further back. The bolt in the Sten gun is a little bit longer than that. Alright, so if the gun is in this configuration like it is now, where the bolt is all the way forward, but you have a loaded magazine in there. You could potentially drop the gun, the bolt could move back far enough to grab a round, chamber the round, and fire it. Because the way these early open bolt submachine guns work is they have a fixed firing pin. Which means they don't have a hammer or anything, they just literally have a nub sticking out of the back of the bolt, so that once the round is chambered, it just fires it automatically. Huh. There is a safety concern on early submachine guns, 
that when you're carrying it in this configuration with a loaded magazine, but the bolt all the way forward, even with the gun on safe, you could bump it against something hard enough for it to chamber and fire around. Okay. So the reason they put this notch back there is so that you can pull the bolt all the way back and engage it into that notch. So now, other than actually grabbing the bolt and moving it out of that notch to where the bolt will engage the sear, other than doing that, there's no way for the gun to fire. <gasps> you, you have it! <laughs> is everything fixed now? Maybe. <laughs> Can I see it? Can I see it? You wanna give it a try? <laughs> uh, yeah. I actually hope it's working, but <laughs> come on, but Oh it works! It works! The <laughs> only gun works! <laughs> oh wait, what's going on? Oh, the charging handle's clipping through the back of the gun. Ah so close! I'm ah, so close! We're slow! We're like right there! We're right there! Whatever, I'm using it. I don't even care. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, uh, the armor comes in women's like, sizes. I'm not, I'm not trying. Whoa, hold up. Hold up. Why do you have an MG34? Things are getting stranger every day. Ah, uh, it's one of those guns with built-in camouflage, but the camouflage uh, function is glitching. Thermoptic camouflage. No, seriously. Was I calling it an MG34 earlier? Pro I think I was. It's an MG42. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry that I kept calling an MG34, but when you look at the two of them, if you want to know the uh, the the super cheat on how to tell the difference between an MG34 and an MG42 at a glance, I you might as well give me that information in case I need it. MG34 round, MG42 square. There you go. Look at the barrel shroud. It's I know it's I know it's engaging thermoptic camouflage, so it's different. See how that part right there is square? I see. That's an MG42. Uh huh. MG34 is a round. It's like a tube with a bunch of holes drilled in it. You would love you would love the MG34 because it's got holes. And uh, the flowers for Algernon. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yep, that's the firing rate of an MG3. We're gonna we're gonna skip over the fact that the loading animation is wrong because I have an MG42 and I don't care. Okay. There's a reason that it was colloquially known as Hitler's buzzsaw. There are U.S. military training videos from World War II that are basically like, yeah, this thing sounds really scary, but don't be too scared of it. it it's more bark than bite, and it's U.S. propaganda because it's not more bark than bite. It's also bark and bite. It's bark and bite. It's a lot of bark and bite. On the MG34, this heat shield is round, and it's one solid round thing, mm -hmm. and it just has a bunch of holes drilled in it, which I know you love. Yes. The MG42, it's made square, and it has a bunch of holes in it. They all got holes in it. They're stamped in it. It's for cooling. Oh, I okay. mean, basically, the whole purpose of this is it's a heat shield. Also, the bipod is missing from this gun, which is interesting. It got damaged, so they removed it. I, I guess. On any high volume of fire, machine gun, you really want to have a way to change barrels quickly. When, when the barrel starts getting too hot, you start losing accuracy because the barrel's expanding, so the bullets aren't actually meshing with the rifling anymore. Yeah, it's starting to so, rattle around in the barrel. Kind of. It just basically, it means your accuracy starts going out the window. So after, after a certain amount of rounds fired, you want to change barrels on them. The thing that's interesting about the MG34 is the way it works is the whole barrel shroud assembly you basically pop that forward, and this whole thing hinges outwards, and the barrel slides out through the back. It's so crazy that you have a gun with a detachable barrel. I don't, I don't know how often I've seen that. Have you seen a 249 or a 240 Bravo? I guess I have. Then yeah. you've seen it. I, I, Those both have detachable barrels. I guess I've. They have just, quick change barrels on I've them. I've never seen the barrels be. Usually, with machine guns, when they're issued out to soldiers. Generally, they're issued the machine gun, and then one, two, sometimes upwards of four spare barrels. Huh. The easiest way to tell the difference between an MG34 and an MG42, this part right here, the barrel and shroud assembly, or heat shield assembly, MG34 is round, MG42 is square. That's the easiest way to tell the difference between the two of them. Gotcha. And then, if it's in a different caliber, it's three. It's the MG3, mm. yeah. I just can't get over the fact that it's got a detachable barrel. Like, you're yeah. already swapping out belts of ammo. Yeah. So, man, how many more parts do you need to constantly be supplying this thing? The bar the the things that... Having quick-change barrels on a belt-fed machine gun is something that is necessary because, as I said, when you get into high volumes of fire, and I'm talking, like, two to 3,000 rounds, you're firing in just, like, long strings of ammo, mm. that barrel's going to get real hot to the point that it's going to start glowing. 
I have literally used a machine gun to cook bacon before. <laughs> I wrapped bacon in aluminum foil and shoved it in between the heat shield and the barrel and just fired it a whole bunch and it cooked it cooked the bacon for me. Not sure that's the best way to do cooking. No, it's a terrible way to cook bacon, but it's fun. At least I can say that I've cooked bacon with a machine gun. All right. You, you know what's something else I've done with a machine gun that you're not supposed to do with a machine gun? I... Uh, I cut down a tree with one. Okay. Yeah. I <laughs> shot at a tree with a 50 caliber machine gun until it fell down. Okay. I guess you can do that. You're yeah. a lumberjack now. Yeah. The tree made me a lumberjack. I can understand them having spare parts around in case they get damaged, but the fact that you have to swap out the barrel when it inevitably overheats almost feels like it's a design flaw. No, it's, it's not a design flaw. It's a very good thing because it's going to overheat. There's nothing you can do about it. If you're firing a lot, a lot of rounds, it's going to overheat. You can, you can get around the quick change barrel feature by doing more s slower, more controlled burst, but sometimes, you just gotta throw a 300 round belt in there and then just keep doing like 10 round bursts at things. Sometimes mm. you just gotta lay down a lot of suppressive fire and then you're gonna have to change barrels. The nice thing about this one with the quick change barrel being on this side is that if you have one or two assistant gunners, if you have an assistant gunner who's doing a real good job supplying you with ammo, keeping this thing fed, he can come to the other side of the machine gun, pop that thing open, <laughs> swap a new barrel into it like really... It is fast. It's like a change. NASCAR pit stop your yeah, gun. It, it kind of is. <laughs> like this thing, you can change barrels on this fast. It's it's real. You basically pop that lever forward. Ba barrel will basically go thunk and pop out. You can grab onto it with like an asbestos glove, rip the barrel out, slap a new one in there, slam it closed, hit the gunner on the back of the head, and now you're ready to go. I would certainly hope you can swap out barrels fast if that's what you have to do to use the gun. Yeah. And then you know your your now your barrel is just cooling down while you wait for it to be you wait for it to be ready. Your barrel has cooled down enough, and now it's ready to go. Isn't the person who's swapping out your barrel gonna burn themselves on your uh, super hot charged oh, barrel? Oh, that, that's why that's why usually the assistant gunner's kit will include some type of oven mitts. Yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. When I when I handle suppressors or machine guns on a regular basis, I literally get an of glove. I go to the store and I buy an of glove, oh, which is just a high temperature glove. And I just use that to handle everything. I, I quite literally have a hot pad <laughs> that is made by Mechanics, the company that makes Mechanics gloves. Mm -hmm. It's it's made by them specifically for handling suppressors. I have a little bag. <laughs> it's basically just an envelope that you can just shove a suppressor into, and it's made of high temperature material, so I don't melt my gun case. Okay. But you say that's weird, but the early machine guns literally part of the BII for early machine guns was a water jug. When you look at early machine guns, you'll notice that the barrel looks like it's huge. And the barrel isn't actually huge. It's a massive heat shroud that is filled with water. Because the barrels on the early machine guns were actually relatively thin. Because <laughs> what they would do is they would put a thin barrel in there and just surround it with water. Water cool your barrel. Yep, they are just all like water cooled guns. It was really only when they started putting machine guns on airplanes that they were like, Oh shit, we can air cool these things. Okay. It's it's weird. A lot of these early machine guns where they're trying to figure out how to do like air cooling and stuff is weird. And then they, they realize that you can reduce a lot of bulk from a machine gun by getting rid of these weird air cooling and water cooling jackets. You just get rid of that and just put a quick change barrel in it. Yeah, but now you're carrying around four or five spare barrels? Which... Water weighs a lot, man. Uh, okay, fair enough. Four fair. spare barrels weighs a lot less than carrying around six gallons of water to keep pouring into your machine gun. That's actually fair. So... Yeah. The machine gunner, the guy carrying this thing, isn't the one carrying all the spare barrels. Oh, some poor guy. The MG42 was designed to work with a team of, let's say, four soldiers. You have the gunner, you have the assistant gunner, and a support gunner and a support gunner. Mm. The AG and the two support gunners are probably each carrying a barrel. The assistant gunner is probably carrying a bunch of ammo, and then the two support gunners are also probably carrying ammo. I see. You have an entire machine gun team dedicated to keeping this thing shooting bullets at people. Wouldn't wouldn't it be easier just to have four people with their own firearms? So yes, you could just give them rifles, but then now now basically what you have is you have one guy with a machine gun who is trying to do the entire machine gun thing by itself. And it's a crew served weapon. Well, I'm saying instead of having one machine gun team, you have four people with assault rifles. And they're putting roughly the same bullets down wind, and also they can't singularly get picked off because there's four of them? They didn't really have assault rifles when Combat Doctrine was developed around this. 
So you're saying we've moved past machine guns? No, we still we still use general purpose machine guns. Like to this day, we still use general purpose machine guns. Just the way they are utilized in combat has vastly changed from the way Germans were using them in World War II. I guess those three people that are supporting the machine gun can still support the machine gun in between swapping out barrels and swapping out ribbons of ammo. They don't have to be sitting there waiting for the barrel to get hot. They can put a few rounds yeah, down range. Yeah, they can They can still be doing, like, supporting fire, which is something that does happen is, you know, you've got the AG, who basically, the AG, his job is just to keep this thing fed. And the other guys are the just other guys carrying are, ammo, really. The other guys are carrying ammo. They're maybe linking more belts together to give to the AG. They're maybe getting a barrel ready to shoot the machine gun. But in the, to- in the time between doing that stuff, you're probably multitasking and occasionally taking pot shots at the enemy. So That makes so much sense. The MG42 is one of my favorite machine guns. Just the fact that it is still in service today as the MG3 is incredible to me. It's like <laughs> they, they did it right the first time. Well, third time. I mean, they, they did it so right that all they had to do was change the caliber. And change the shape of the barrel. Well, that was the MG34, which is a different gun. Okay, uh, is it? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's a, the MG34 is a different gun. It uses a similar operating principle, but it is a vastly different gun. Oh, all right. Yeah. The way the barrel comes out is different. The way a lot of the internals work is different. Interesting fact, when they went to the MG42, the MG34 was actually still in use in tanks. So the reason that they used the MG34 on tanks was because you needed way less space to be able to change barrels on it. Mm. Space is a premium inside a tank. Yeah. It has some advantages. You don't need as much space. And also, if it's inside a tank, it's not going to get covered in as much mud as it would if you're a soldier running around and falling down and dropping your machine gun. Unless the tank in front of you peeled out really fast. Yeah, unless they do a burnout. Just do like a, (laughs) get a stud right in front of you. Just doing a sick burnout. (laughs) And then the entire time they're playing like Thug Life. And then the Stug driver is just going, I didn't choose a Stug Life. The Stug Life chose me. And he pops a wheelie. (laughs) I guess it'd be more of a treddy. Treddy? Yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah, I, I absolutely love this machine gun. The fact that militaries are still using the MG42 just as the rechambered in 308 as the MG3 is incredible to me. It's always crazy when a gun is designed right the first time. And so, so many machine guns owe their lineage directly to the MG42. Like the M60 basically wholesale copied the MG42 <laughs> feed tray cover. All right. They are like almost identical in terms of how they work on the inside. The feed system is very similar between the 240 and the MG42. They they just they just nailed it. All right, shall we go use it to secure a book? This machine gun is woo. Hello. <laughs> this machine gun is so prolific, and they made so many of them, and they're so effective that I saw them. I straight up saw them still. World War II issued MG42s being confiscated and used in Iraq. Wow. Ooh. I found a gyrojet carbine. I have no I've never heard of that before. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a mini rocket launcher. How oh, is it now? Yep, not even kidding. It's literally a tiny rocket launcher. When the firing pin is struck, the little tiny rocket actually takes off out the end of the gun. <laughs> and it's it's spin stabilized so that the 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 jets come out of the the back of the rocket at like an angle, which makes it spin as it oh, goes through the air. Gyroscopically stabilized. Yes. Is it related to the gyro jet pistol? Yeah. It's one of the only guns that the bullet actually starts going faster after it leaves the barrel. That's not how the laws of physics work. Because it's the rocket has to get up to speed. Fascinating, almost fantasy weapon. Yeah, they're really, it's, it's definitely this weird like space age future gun. Shoots magic. My wife needs a gun, but she can't. Her little wrist can't pull the slide back on a Glock 19. So get her something easy. Get her something easy to use, like a 357 Magnum snub nose. She can't handle the slide on a gun, but she can handle the recoil from a revolver. So, what? How are you smarter than most of the boomers that come in and ask for a revolver? Ah, <laughs> oh, the joys of working at a gun store. <laughs> Congratulations, Mike. You, knowing nothing about guns, are actually smarter than most of these people. Know nothing about guns? I, that's an indictment on you. I've been traveling with you. You've been talking about them <laughs> for six years. I got problems. <laughs> Love lost. Your lips move, but I can't hear what you're saying. I don't even know what, that, <laughs> what that's supposed to mean. Yeah, yeah, what the f- It's got a <laughs> tiny skull. Oh, man. I hate this. <laughs> He's got a little tiny little skull on him. <laughs> 
All right. What, what, what was that called when they, they slam shackle it? He basically, he, he kit bashed it, basically. Kit, he kit bashed it. So we've got the back of, this looks like the back of the Bozar. This is the receiver of the machine gun up the, here. The barrel is from an M16A2. The handguard is from the assault carbine. It's got a box magazine from something. The pistol grip is from the Gauss gun. Um, huh. It's got like a weird muzzle brake on it. And then it's got a scope from something else, which it looks, I don't know what the hell. For some reason, it's a loophole scope. I can tell because it's got the gold ring around the end of it and then the little loophole logo. Now, I'll help deal with a little tiny lesion flag. And then the rear sight is off like an M1 carbine. What the, yeah, this thing is like a weird kit bashed gun. Ace of clubs? Oh, did you find a new weapon? I think so. What the? Jeez! <laughs> yeah? The fuck? It's a Gauss pistol. <laughs> okay, so it's Han Solo's blaster, but it's a single shot. It uses five. Oh my god, what the? Yeah. <laughs> That's it cool looking. So it's a Mauser broom handle with a hunting rifle stock attached to it upside down with the barrel of a Gauss rifle? A, a miniaturized Gauss rifle. And it's got a giant ace of clubs. Oh, on. there's a namesake right there. It's Mike, it's a Wowser. A Wowser? It's a Mauser C97. It's okay. the original version of this. But then Chinese companies made knockoff versions of it. And sometimes they would try to write the logo in English. The Wowser broom handle. Yeah, but, <laughs> so it would just say Wowser on it. All right. So the ace of clubs is the first one I have. This is the ace of diamonds. Ooh. Jeez, it's a <laughs> Snelfioil! <oil. laughs> what? I, I probably pronounced that incorrectly, but there's a full auto version of the Mauser broom handle that's called the Schnellfoya, oh. which basically means fast fire because it's full auto. <laughs> the Endless Tragedy? That's the name. That's a name. Uh, it's a 1911 with trench sights and a suppressor. Okay. Is it a, a pink pistol? Because that's kind of cool. It's like copper. Yeah, it's like, it's a commander size 1911, so it's smaller grip, barrel is slightly smaller. Um, it's got a ring hammer on it, which is pretty cool. Ah, I like Suppre it. Integrate, or er, uh, suppressor built That's into it. It's not an integrated suppressor. And uh, trench sight. I, a lot of people don't like trench sights. I really like trench sights for close range stuff, but anything more than about 15 yards and trench sights are kind of pointless. What the fuck is metal bit? The f what weapon is this, Zach? It's a hunting shotgun of some uh, sort. Yeah, it's an over-under shotgun that also the animation pack is broken for, but we'll gloss over that really quick. I can, all right. Yeah, they, they, see, look what happens when I fire twice. <laughs> uh, you didn't really break open anything, did yeah, you? Yeah, it doesn't actually break open anything. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird shotgun. I don't like it. <laughs> no, you're not even going to look at it. No, right. it's really... It's, so the bottom part is from a, like a laser gun. I don't know what the fuck that stock is from. The four ends from an over-under shotgun, and then it's got like a heat shield on the top barrel. Another kit-bashed weapon, huh? Yeah, I don't like it. Oh. What? Why does it have a lever-action receiver on the back of it? Yes? Where are those bullets coming out of? Okay, I need to drop this thing and look at this. This whole episode is just going to be Zach rants about how these guns shouldn't exist. <laughs> There's no trigger guard, which is just a nightmare in and of itself. Well, why is a trigger guard important anyway? Because it makes sure that you don't accidentally bump the gun against something and that hits the trigger and the gun just goes off. All right, so we've got the, we've got a CAR-15 stock or a CAR-15 stock on here. Also known as an AR-15 stock. We've got the handguard of... Looks like an M4. AR-15 front sight. But this receiver... It's the lever action rifle receiver. There's the side loading gate. Uh huh. You can even see the two locking blocks that go on the bolt. Again, it's just kit bashed stuff together. <laughs> so, probably wouldn't function in real life. No, it definitely would not. <laughs> uh, anybody else have a fun gun? The cross machine gun. I wanted to come here to test out the weapons, and we keep finding more weapons to test out. Um, it's. A, wait, what the fuck is on the front of this? So, uh, yeah, it's a submachine gun, it's, a, it's an M3 grease gun. We've been over the M3 Anybody grease gun before, but it's got a really long bit. Why? Why? So apparently, this person thinks that this barrel on the top of it is where the round should come out of an M3 <laughs> grease gun. Not the barrel on the bottom, 
that the bayonet is attached to. <laughs> That's where the bullet actually does come out. That's where the bullet actually comes out. So the bullet will be coming out and hitting the back of this <laughs> knife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the vaporizer. What the? Yikes. Oh, Gauss, Gauss snap rifle, maybe? Uh, it's like a Gauss submachine gun. Neat! Oh, that could be fun. Let's let's drop this gun really quick and take a look at it. Because this thing is another abomination that shouldn't exist. <laughs> so we've got the 22 submachine gun, which, as I've said before, is based on the AM-180 22 submachine gun. But then it's got a lever-action rifle barrel sticking out of it. And it's got the optic from, I'm pretty sure, a Gauss rifle. Which and also a glowy bit on the back. Ah, oh, the glowy bit makes it fire the Gauss stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a Gauss rifle with four <laughs> rocket barrels attached to the end of it. Oh, okay, that is absolutely ratchet and clank right there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's real dumb. It's kind of fun, though. Yeah, it's kind of fun. That, that is just going to rip your hand open. What, are you talking about the safety lever? No, I'm talking about the bolts on the side of the handguard. That's just gonna rip your hand open the moment you... Why is there a little tiny bolt, like a bolt action rifle bolt? On the left side? On the left side of this thing. Why is that there? That's the top cover. That's where the... This this, this little tab sticking out of the back. That's where the recoil spring is. What the fuck? <laughs> what am I looking at here? There's literally... It's a gun with cables in it. For some reason, there's 10 million cables going to the back of the stock. Or uh, I guess that's where you store the battery for your airsoft gun. Cool. It's where the tech is stored. The tech is stored there. This is made out of a tree branch. You can see where the, the extra branch <laughs> is sticking out of it. But they actually shaped the rest of the stock. The butt stock is partially broken. This is the post-apocalypse. We're making do with what we got. There's like three bolts sticking out of the handguard, which are immediately going to catch your hand in the most painful way possible. Yeah, maybe catch your hand. I'm going to be careful. The magazine is, I don't know what is going on with that. It's got a thing on it that says power. It's high tech. It can't be that high tech. They still have the slant muzzle brake on it. A compressed air cylinder. And then again, why is there a little tiny bolt handle on that? This is, okay, you know what this is? Do tell. This is when they make a gun out of resin for a film so that they can drop it and they don't have to worry about breaking it. Hmm. That's what that's what that is. I think it looks future tech. This is like the, well, you know what? You are more than welcome to use it. Thank you for your blessing. Because you're poor and only poor people use AKs. There's like a mechanism from a side folding stock that's up towards the front where the trunnion would be. Yeah, but I'm not a big fan of trunnions. Okay. It's a laser weapon. Plasma, Mike. Plasma. I, I don't know the difference. Huh. I haven't seen one of those in a while. The assault rifles were really common in Fallout 3, but oh my god, it's even... It's, you can't ADS. It is the one from Fallout 3. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh god, I just realized how much is fucking wrong about this poor G3. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, all right. I, I'm, I'm sorry. We're getting another gun rant here. <laughs> There is so much stuff wrong about this gun. The handguard... Doesn't have enough holes in it. ...is oval for some reason and doesn't actually line up with where the receiver is. The cocking tube doesn't line up with where the receiver is. If you know anything about firearms, you see this thing above the barrel and you think, oh, gas tube. This is not a gas tube on the G3. That is the tube for the cocking handle, actually. Oh, ooh. Because the G3... The G3 doesn't actually have a gas system. This handguard is based off of the original G3 handguard. It's a very slim, streamlined handguard, basically identical to the one that was on the Setme, which is what the G3 is based off of. That's that's oval-shaped for some reason. I don't know why it's oval-shaped. It's a bit elongated, yes. Yeah. The magazine actually looks about as right as you could get it. Interestingly, you see those two holes that are in the stock? Yeah. Do you know what those two holes are for? Speed. No, those two holes are for those two pins right there, because those pins are not captive. So you take the pins out, and then you put them into the stock so you don't lose them. Oh, they're pin-holding holes. Yep. The rear sight has a one. on That that line right there is a one, and you can see this big V-notch that's in there. Mm -hmm. That is actually correct, but they didn't actually put it where you would use it. Because So this is this is what's called a diopter sight. It's got three holes and then that notch in it. Mm -hmm. Each one of the holes is for, like, different distances, and the, the farther away the distance is, the smaller the hole is. Right. 
but they didn't actually put any of the other holes in there. <laughs> just one so hole. So it just got one V-notch on the side, which isn't pointed the direction the site would be. The selector lever is way far forward. Yeah, it kind of... <laughs> it's also tiny. I don't know why they made the selector lever so tiny and moved it so far forward. It should be directly above the pistol grip, basically so your thumb can rest on it. Right. Um, Maybe the person who got this firearm had a genetic deformity that gave him the super long thumbs, and that was comfortable for him. Maybe. The, the charging handle, interestingly, they actually skeletonized the charging handle, which is something they did on the later ones, but not the earlier ones, I think. I could be wrong. I might be getting that backwards. Hmm. But for some reason, it's angled down at like a 45 when it should be up at like a 30 degree angle. It's, I, I don't know why the charging handle is like, like pointed down like that. That doesn't make any sense. The flash hider looks weird. Interestingly, I believe the selector was also on semi-auto. But which it's this full is auto. On, which this is on full auto. Mm, yes. There's no hole in the sight. It's too narrow. It's, uh, Obviously, maybe that's why you're not aiming down sights, because you ain't got good oh, sights. Oh, yeah, because I, I don't have sights to use. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. We filled in the back of it because you're supposed to use the Binden aiming concept. We filled in the sights with cement. Yeah, we filled in the back of it because you're supposed to use the Binden aiming concept. Just keep both eyes open and your brain will superimpose the image. <laughs> All right, um, we're just gonna pretend that this operates like an M1 Garand, because apparently it does. Those shotgun shells are just floating. They're not supported by any kind of chamber. So the moment you pull the trigger on this thing, the shell is just gonna grenade in your hands. It's not gonna be fun. And then why is there a coil wrapped around the barrel? And why do I have the muzzle brake off of the anti-material rifle? There's a bayonet attached to it, which, okay. Well, hold up. That is literally the speed loader from the revolver. What is this gun? What is this gun? Ooh, this thing is ugly. But is it functional? Uh, I mean, yeah, it worked. The, the front iron sight on it is literally the eagle from atop of a flag. <laughs> Love it. That's kind oh, of fun. and it's a single shot, too. Oh. Yikes. That's a bit rough. The icon makes it look like a G3, but in-game, it's a weird mishmash of AK and AR slapped together somehow. Okay. An AKR, eh? Yeah, it's got, like, the handguard of an AK on it, and the front sight is very AK reminiscent. The stock is literally made out of a piece of pipe. Yeah, it is makeshift for a reason. It is very makeshift. All things considered, it's a relatively normal-looking firearm. I mean, it looks okay. Let's see what this makeshift pistol looks like. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh God, the barrel is quite literally a lead pipe. Yeah, it is. Maybe they riveted the inside of it. They uh, rifled the inside of that thing, yeah. It only holds two shots. Really? I feel like that clip has more than two. That clip ha that clip has way more than two rounds in it. <laughs> yep. Eight of those bullets go over to the nether realm. <laughs> it just eats ammo literally. It's 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 uh, it's funny because when I do that, it's like when a skeleton drinks something <laughs> where it just all it just all comes out the bottom of the magazine well. <laughs> yeah. And there's actually two barrels in the gun. It's so bad that it's not even... The handle? The handle is made of an actual knife. The handle is made of an actual... Wow, this is... <laughs> it's a handle blade, is it? <laughs> nice. Time to step down, Smith and Meth, son. There's a new <laughs> junky gun on the streets. I really don't like how this looks. You don't like the makeshift shotgun? No, man, it's bad. For some reason, it's got an M79 rear sight on it. I don't know why. And then, like, the shotgun shells... Aren't the chamber? There's not even a chamber on this gun. They're not supported by anything. It's a gun made out of magic. Isn't that something that appeals to you? No, it doesn't. And also, I hate that it makes the M1 Garand ping for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. There's nothing correct about this gun. <laughs> Fine, use the regular shotgun. The the only good thing about the makeshift shotgun is that I can break it down in, into tiny parts to <laughs> replace some of the springs that are missing on my lever action. Okay. 